Well, welcome everyone uh, to our free Tuesday trainings. Today, Jim is going to be presenting and we're going to be talking about landing pages and how to get them so that people will pay attention to them. So I'm going to turn the time right over to uh, Jim, who just apparently just got a brand new haircut. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Jim. I've had it for a few days. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to share my background real quick. And then make a cool background. Okay, there we go. Nope, I don't see it here. Oh, I see it. Well, that's good. Nice. Okay. Do you see it now? Nope. Okay. Well, let's see if I can share again. There we go. No. There it goes. Now, yeah. let me share it to the whole world. There we go. Yes. There you are. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the uh, weekly Tuesday training um, from uh, BP Media and E2 Total Solutions. Today, we're going to talk about how to improve your landing pages. And then, when we, after this whole long conversation, we get to the end of this, I have kind of little surprises for you. So let's get rolling. Um, <clears throat> you guys have probably all seen this. This is a, a, a collection of photos that have, have happened throughout my life. Obviously the skydiving one and living in Hawaii, jumping out of planes. Uh, those moose that you see in the lower left corner, that was taken literally from my driveway when I lived up in the woods. Uh, the bear was also uh, just above that was also from up in the woods when I lived up there. And, and of course my uh, Christmas tree and everything in the right. So you can see that I've, I've done a lot of things. Scuba dive, skydive, sailed out into the Atlantic, um, into Africa. Um, so there's a lot of fun things that uh, Jim is known for. Um, and he's kind of a little bit of an uh, adventurist, a little bit of a crazy guy. But uh, what we're going to learn, what we're going to talk about today is, is um, landing pages. And what we're going to learn basically is how to get your foot in the door, um, some copywriting secrets. Um, trust is, is horrifically important when it comes to a landing page. And, you, and the thing about a landing page is you don't have a lot of time to build that trust. So uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, there's a psychology of design, common sense tactics that actually make, uh, can stop you from making massive mistakes. And then of course, forms and, and stuff like that. The final thing we're gonna have is, is kind of a checklist of things that you want in your, um, your landing page. So think about all that and we're gonna jump right into it. Um, first of all, I wanna point out that there's two kinds of, of landing pages. Um, if you look at this page right here, the one that my cursor's on, the girl with the hat, that is a standalone, good gosh, that is a standalone landing page as a separate site. On that separate site, you can see that it's, it's very minimal in, um, uh, content. There's a home page and then a blog page. Basically, uh, very few words. All it does is say that you can do it. And then it's it, this page actually points you to um, one of two other pages. This page is a sign up page. You can see what there's a sign up form here. And then the other page is the home page. So this is the home page actually for a client that Boyd and I both work on. Uh, it's called Wake Up Sense and they deal with depression. So the site. Uh, over here is called uh, Reduce Your Depression. So uh, I'm going to kind of ask you a question and then you guys have to decide. Do you want this standalone page to drive to a sign-up page? This is actually the sign-up page for this book right here. So do you want them to, the clients, when they find the uh, Reduce Depression page, do you think they should go right here and sign up for this book? Or do you think that it should drive them to the home page? Well, the obvious answer is that you want to drive them directly to um, the sign-up page. So this page, this site over here deals with depression. So if you're talking about depression, you want to drive them to a place where they can sign up and receive the free ebook. Uh, they put in their their username and stuff, inf their information here, uh, an email address, user or name and and personal last name, and they get the book for free don't have to go through all of the navigation and all of this stuff to figure anything out, um, which this is the homepage. So of course you would expect all of that there. 
you clicked on this, you automatically land here too. So this drives you to this page. This website drives you to this page. Uh, you don't want to muddy things up or or have it be too complicated to get what they're trying to resolve. You're trying to resolve a pain point. And that pain point, of course, is reducing depression. How do you reduce your depression? You click on this page and it will send you right here. So um, we're, we're going to talk a little tiny bit about copy, but um, you, you can understand pretty clearly that the top page with the book uh, and the, the uh, lady there uh, with the curly hair, that obviously deals with depression as well. This other site, this whole other site deals with reducing depression. And it can you can drive them either to a blog that's inside of that site or clicking on the homepage, which will drive them directly to the um, uh, how to receive the, the free ebook. So, you know, there's two kinds of sites, a standalone site and an internal site inside of your page or inside of your website. So the website can drive them to the, the uh, problem solving solution or another standalone website can drive them to that uh, ultimate solution. Um, we're gonna talk specifically about the forward facing ones, uh, the standalone pages, and um, so most of it will, will lend itself to that. There's, you know, I might make a reference or two to the on-site landing page, but most of that's internal. Uh, so we wanna talk about the standalone websites. Um, it's, it's been known that um, a lot of corporations in, in you know, whoever, I mean, you can, I can name a couple of different big corporations. They could have 30 different landing pages. So if you're talking about United Steel, which is a, a metal fabrication and, and delivery system, they have a page probably for uh, diamond plate. They have a page for raw steel. They have a page for aluminum or zinc or sheets of um, aluminum or, or whatever. So um, they might have individual landing pages so that if you're looking for um, diamond plate, you know, a sheet of diamond plate. Um, how do you find that? Well, you type that into your search and it pulls up one page because it's optimized for diamond plate. And then ultimately when you click on that, that'll drive you to an internal page inside of the United Steel uh, Corporation uh, that goes to their diamond plate page. I mean, that is just pure logic. I mean, it absolutely makes sense. So when you're dealing with um, uh, a landing page and and you know I, I use United Steel frequently as an example because that's really simplistic. If you're um, dealing with um, you know I'm going to say a pharmaceutical like uh, not that other site that other site was was holistic, um, but if you're dealing with a holistic solution, you have to deal with um, and, and think about gender, um, age, and ethnicity, uh, family status, income, occupation, and interests. Um, so if you're looking for holistic medicine, um, are they, what gender are they? And what are you speaking to that gender? You have to have, um, you know, uh, verbiage uh, on that page that uh, speaks to um, or resonates with that particular audience. Um, and then um, I put KISS there at the bottom, and we all know that that stands, there's a variety of uh, acronyms that it is, but I'm going to stick with, uh, keep it simple, stupid. And um, so we want to have a language that will resonate with your audience based on all of that criteria that's there on the left, as well as um, you keeping it simple. And keeping it simple, stupid means a lot of things. One of the things that it means in, indirectly is that you use very few words. You don't want to muddy up your landing page. And so you want to keep your copy to a bare minimum. Um, it, it's been said that uh, 87. Uh, landing pages that found an average had only six words long. So 87% of the landing pages only had six words. And that's phenomenal. If you looked at that picture on the right there, and there were six words about skateboards, it would be really simple. Um, you know, I don't want to say simple, stupid, but with six words, absolutely can get your message across. That picture Graphically, with the skateboard uh, leaning against the wall, you could say buy best skateboards at and then your company name or, or have your company logo. Um, I, I uh, genuinely uh, like to see people promote their logo on a landing page or on a standalone landing page. And a standalone landing page 
can be a standalone, meaning that there, it's one page big. And so don't uh, discount that. It's, uh, I recently, not recently, but a few years ago, um, ranked a, a realtor. Um, she actually outranked the, the company that she worked for. She worked for a big nationwide real estate company. A standalone landing page, optimized correctly with very few words, outranked um, her national corporation. The national corporation had a lot of words, had a lot of choices, had a lot of links, had a lot of internal links to different pages. She had a standalone page with very few words, and she ranked ranked her, her corporate uh, counterparts. I kind of pissed them off a little bit. But she just said, hey, you know, my, my CEO guy did a great job. So um, we did, and it's a little bit easier. You can uh, then maybe spend a little bit more time focusing on optimization or backside optimization, which is um, a, a valiant effort or a good idea. Um, but, um, remember to keep it simple, have it graphically rich, have your logo, and have um, just as little as six words, which you absolutely can rank that page if, if the keywords or the words are, are appropriate. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> the next thing is, is that you want to gain trust. Um, we all know that we do business with people we know, like, and trust. And um, so with a landing page, it's kind of interesting because you have very little time to actually gain their trust. Um, you know, you... you um, uh, you know, they're going to, you know, type in a search, you know, for diamond plate or whatever it is. And, um, you know, somebody like, uh, you know, United Steel Corporation is going to come up early in that search. And if you want to compete with them or, or outrank them, you have to do a couple of things. And, and here's kind of a list uh, of things that you can do. Um, have a phone number of the fold. And uh, it really drives me crazy when I have to, when I'm looking for something and I go in and I have to scroll to the bottom of the page to find a phone number. If you put that phone number up in the header of that page, that does uh, immeasurable things to help you gain trust right away because you're putting your phone number right up there. It's right on the top of the page. It's easy for them to find. It's easy for them to see. Um, if you, I like to put it in really bold letters, not really small letters as well. Uh, let them know that you know you're not afraid to take a phone call. Uh, you can do other things like including a photograph of a human. Um, that kind of humanizes the whole process. Um, you know, if you can, if you have a, a, a human picture there saying, you know, call me or here's a, my money back guarantee or or uh, something like that, then you absolutely can always gain more trust more quickly. You've got a phone number. You've got a human face there for them to kind of connect to. And then of course you can uh, maybe show uh, some companies, uh, and Boyd's a huge fan of this, uh, just showing uh, that there's uh, maybe a, a, a stringer across the bottom where people actually, you know, other companies have left five-star reviews. Um, that's something that uh, you know, we're starting to put a much greater focus on is the number of reviews that all of our clients have. So um, that's something that Boyd and I will probably be talking about in the very short term. Show that other companies trust you. Show that other companies like you. Um, once in a while, you may, maybe uh, let a, a, a four-star review, you know, flow through there. But uh, it's it, it's good um, to have a lot, you know, five-star reviews. Um, but I'm going to tell you something that's interesting on the flip side: 100% of your reviews are five-star reviews. Then nobody will trust them. So you have to let the four-star reviews or the 3.8-star reviews or whatever go through bring your your measurement from five star down to 4.7 or something like that unless i'm mistaken 4.7 is the magic number that is where people trust you the most is if you have a 4.5 to 4.7 or 4.8 reviews is what you average then that lets people know that you're human and you have some some uh, little uh, flaws if you will but uh, that makes you more human and makes them want to trust you but if you're straight five star uh, very few people will actually trust you. So <clears throat> everything you can uh, in, in that list up above the fold, the human face, the phone number, uh, some reviews, and um, a money back guarantee, or let them know that there's a money back guarantee. Um, the, this uh, slide is an example. I, it was one that I found when I was doing my research for today's show. It shows what above the fold looks like on both a laptop and a phone. Uh, more and more searches today are being done by phone. So don't discount the phone and pay attention to being 
um, uh, mobile reactive or responsive um, when somebody, you know, look at your website basically on your phone is what I'm saying. A lot of people, uh, clients that I have run into, have never actually looked at their own site on their phone because things rearrange themselves and uh, they look kind of different. So um, just be aware of that and um, make sure that you check both the mobile and the uh, desktop. <clears throat> okay. Um, we're using a, a, a proven psychology for landing pages. This is kind of runs hand in hand with what we were just talking about. Here's seven, or excuse me, nine topics um, that um, you actually need to use to actually have your page work from a psychological perspective. <clears throat> Number one is make a nice uh, headline, um, you know, nice looking, uh, have it in a readable font. Some people like to use these funky fonts and you can't read them. You know, and, and I'm thinking of scripty fonts or something like that. They just don't make sense. Have a nice, you know, I'm not saying everything should be an aerial, uh, but having a nice block type headline lets people know immediately what the page is about. A lot of this psychology also kind of uh, reverts back to Google. If you have something in a font that's unlegible or a, a not a, um, a internet or web font, and it makes it hard for Google to understand them as well. So it makes it hard for Google to rank the site if you have things like a headline that is in an unlegible uh, fashion. Uh, the second thing is that you need a secondary headline uh, using a clear and concise voice. Uh, number three would be um, uh, truncated copy. And, and in most uh, applications, WordPress is what I'm thinking of. You absolutely can uh, truncate that copy and say, I want it to be you know, 100 words long. And at the 100 word point, you put in a um, marker and it, it forces everything to a secondary page. So if they click on that block of, of, of type in number three, first of all, it doesn't run very long. I'm gonna say 100 words. Then if they wanna click on that, it'll take them off to another page where they can finish reading that information. You don't have to publish it all on the, the home page. Um, so think about that. Um, next uh, is a, a nice testimonial. Um, you know, that's also, it can be truncated. You don't want too many words on the homepage. You don't want to muddy it up with, with all kinds of extra information. Um, on number five, you've got a pretty clear call to action. Um, number five and number six are both call to action, if you really think of them that way. One is do it now. The other one is click here. So they can do it now and or click here. If they click there, it's going to take them off to whatever, um, problem resolution you, you, you're proposing for them. Uh, so that's a great one. Uh, nine, or excuse me, eight is a, a clear, concise graphic image. Um, and then of course, nine is the bottom of the, the fold. So you can see how all of those things you've, you've got to the bottom, I uh, skipped seven, excuse me. But you, the time you get down to nine, you've got uh, all the information of everything's above the fold. Number seven, by the way, was link, 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 link. And what I'm saying there is that you drive them off to secondary pages. You might drive them to a shopping cart. You might drive them to a, a blog. You might drive them to more testimonials. You might drive them to more information about the site uh, or the, the, the purpose for the site. Always think of um, making sure that everything is there in a concise, clear form, not too wordy, so that the consumer can consume it, understand what the, what's the purpose of the site, and then uh, make it legible and, and make it uh, worthwhile for them. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was A-B testing, and it's not unrealistic to have two um, pages, if you will, and see which one gets the most clicks. You know, you need to, to add, of course, Google Analytics or a variety of other software uh, that can track that. Um, there's a couple of other ones that I like, and I'm getting actually more uh, relevant information from some of those than I am from Google Analytics. Google Analytics is great, and I love them, and um, I've used them for, good gosh, maybe 15 years or longer. I think they're about that old. Um, but there started to become some other ones that are real uh, pertinent and very concise information. Uh, Google might say you had 100 people that came to your site from Facebook, but um, I can tell now what part of Facebook they came from or where they, you know, which other social media they came from. There's a lot of other things that are going on there. Uh, so I'm, I'm starting to like these other things a little tiny bit more. But always have a, a good psychology or purpose behind your, your landing page. Mm -hmm. The next is um, 
uh, use an irresistible call to action. And irresistible was just a word that was so great, I could not use it. Uh, and so there's a variety of different you know, things that are calls to action. Um, you can make it stand out uh, from the rest of your page by you know, using a color like uh, in this particular instance, uh, green was the color that actually jumped out to me. Um, and, and make sure that it, it gives them a sense of instant gratification. When uh, you know they, they clicks, you click call us, um, a lot of web browsers in particular and, and, and web applications, uh, WordPress is one that I'm fond of. Um, it says, you know, dialing on Jim's um, Android device. Uh, when I click a call to action button. So you can actually make it connect to your phone. Uh, the website will connect to your phone or to the, the user's phone. Um, clicking a, a call to action. Um, there's, a, you know, a, I've got a whole file, I think maybe, um, gosh, in excess of uh, 50 or 60 call to actions. But, you know, here's an example of a few of them. You know, do it now, do it instantly, get by day, quick, results, call us, free. Um, those are all good examples of um, instant calls to actions, instant gratification, and um, getting uh, the person on the phone so that you can close the deal or you can close the sale. Uh, Boyd and I had a whole big conversation about uh, closing the deal or, or closing the sale the other day. And I think it was recorded for one of our podcasts. So um, getting that instant gratification, using an irresistible call to action is the way to go. Get them on the phone, get them closing the deal and get them buying the product service or whatever it is. But, um, drive them uh, directly through the website. So that's uh, important for you to do that. Okay, uh, here's no distractions um, for your uh, solution. And um, I, I really, really hate it. People read um, uh, from a, a PowerPoint, which this is, of course. So I'm going to let you guys you know, scroll over the other stuff. But I'm going to say, a, I'm going to read the quote, by the way. A uh, standalone web Page, or a landing page is a standalone web page uh, clear of distractions from your main website. It's designed for a single focus, focused objective. This means that your landing page should have no mobile navigation to tie it to the primary website. The main reason for this limit, limit is the option available to your visitors, helping to guide them toward the intended uh, conversion goal. So think about that for a second. Um, this particular person that I was quoting is saying, there should be no link to any other part of the site. So um, the, the website, the Wake Up Sense website that we were talking about earlier, uh, probably has uh, 10 or 12 navigational buttons uh, at the top of it. And then internally, I think it probably has um, 30 or 40 internal cross-linking uh, uh, parts of the site. Um, so you could get lost pretty quickly if you're driving them any place but the solution to their problem. So if their solution is, what are the uh, signs of depression? And you're driving them to you know, a page that has, what are the signs of anxiety, depression, um, overwork, uh, you know, stress? Well, you know, there's a whole list of things, places that you could drive them. Um, but they typed in, what are the signs of depression? You don't want to send them any place but to the signs of depression. So there's a, probably a sign of depression, and then that free ebook that we talked about. Both of those resolve that problem. You can pick and choose wherever you want them to land. Make the landing page go to one place. Solve one problem. Um, you have roughly 15 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, for them to make a decision whether that's appropriate uh, page. So they do a search. There's a list of 10 sites. They click on your site and they land there and they're, they're gonna decide in 10 seconds, I'm gonna say, I think I put 15 in there, but uh, 10 seconds is, is probably longer than they actually will use to actually make a decision. Whether that resolves or answers their question or sends them to the right place or inside the site or whatever, but only drive them to one location. Um, having a ton of navigational information is uh, distracting. Uh, information about something other than the offer or the solution is distracting. Um, make sure that um, there's no, I, I, this is like become a, a, um, a, a peeve of mine. There's no 
pop-ups. If, if you, somebody is, searches for signs of depression, you send them there and then all of a sudden pop up an offer with a free ebook, that is a distraction. They will not buy from you. They're gonna navigate away as quickly as possible. Now, sending them to a navigational page where there is an offer for a book, that's different than having a pop-up pop up right in front of their face and uh, start to drive them crazy. So um, please do not put any pop-ups on any of your landing pages. Ah, there we go. Okay, number seven is optimize your forms. So um, this is a really super simple form. Um, I was looking for forms, looking for forms on my client pages, looking for forms on, um, there's a couple of websites that just make forms basically. And um, you really kind of need to decide what um, your offer really is. Um, if your offer is for them to join a mailing list or for them to get a free ebook or something like that, all you really need is their email address, a name or fir first or last name are kind of nice. All you really need, if you're going to use it for marketing purposes down the road, is to um, get their email address. And then you're going to be able to push information to them. I mean, obviously, at the bottom somewhere, it says, you know, the, you know, clicking this button, you know, you accept, you know, future marketing offers or whatever. But um, all of that's going to happen, you know, in the fine type at the bottom. Somebody, you're solving a problem like depression. Um, you know, they're going to put their name in right away and they're going to say, oh my gosh, where have you been? This is going to help me resolve my problem. Um, so have them put that information there. I mean, if you're doing it for lead capture, that's a little bit of uh, a, a more complex animal. Um, if it's just to simply opt into your email list, that's simple. If it's, it's trickier if you're trying to um, get them to... Uh, um, sign up for a lead generation thing um, where it says, you know, lead generation, we're going to, you know, push this information out to you a little bit further down the road. A list is one thing, lead generation or two is a separate animal and, and you need to be a little bit more uh, forthcoming and clear about what's happening to their, their content or their, their email list, their email, excuse me, after they, they hit the submit button. So think about that before you actually design the form optimize optimize your forms for lead generation and you'll go much further down that particular road okay i promised a, a checklist um, at the end uh, of the kind of presentation today and there is the checklist um, i don't want again i don't want to read it to you but i'm going to kind of just scroll through it um, use the same language that your audience speaks um, uh, cut your copy to a bare minimum make an offer um, use a photo of a human, uh, show that other companies trust you, um, use a call to action. It's imperative that you use a, a call to action, a strong call to action. And that will, will vary, vary, excuse me, a little bit based on um, what the offer is. You know, are you wanting them to buy something? Are you wanting to join or, you know, download or get a free rebook or whatever? So sure, you're, you're really clear on what that call to action is. Um, but a single landing page, drive them to that solution and then have that solution be crystal clear that they're going to download it or they're going to um, join a subscribe to a list or, or whatever. Um, make it make that call to action stand out from the rest of the page. Um, use the sense of instant gratification. Um, continue the conversation. Uh, so if somebody joins your list, make sure that you send out an email to them or a, a newsletter to them. Um, remove anything that's not directly related to the offer. Uh, disable pop-ups. Um, take out any uh, superlicious form fields, uh, superfluous form fields, and uh, break forms into steps if they have to be long. Um, so you can have it be, you know, just sign up for the um, newsletter or sign up for the free ebook, and and you want more information for them to actually get that free ebook. So. There's a lot of information there, um, but uh, hopefully you guys have taken a screen grab of this particular page because I've kind of hung out on it a little bit extra longer, so you could. Um, but that's a good uh, checklist of things that you need uh, for your landing pages. Um, now, here's one of my surprises. Um, oh, okay, good. So my, my, here's my surprise. We have talked about everything realistically that 
helps a creator form a good landing page. We haven't even touched the SEO aspect of this. This is my clue to Boyd. We're going to have another class on, land, on doing SEO for your landing page before long. So he's going to have to put that in his schedule and I will create the class. But um, SEO means so many other things. You know, what are the keywords? Um, you know, is there marketing associated with it? What's the, you know, do you have backlinks driven from it? What's the design? What's the metadata? What's the strategy? So much more involved in SEO in a page than just going through the steps that we went through. All those steps that we went through were kind of superficial. All of this stuff kind of happens in the background. So think about that for a second. Everything that we've talked about uh, in the last, um, you know, 50 minutes or whatever, 40 minutes, um, has been about just uh, creating the landing page itself. All these other things happen kind of behind the scenes. So um, think about SEO in your landing page as well as uh, building and making the page look attractive and have the right call to action and all those other things. So that's important. And we are gonna have a class on uh, doing SEO for landing pages. We'll do that before long. The bonus of course, is that you get to all go to SEO in 360 and buy books on um, everything from write rewriting an article, image optimization, XML sitemap generation. There's about a hundred products at SEO on 360. All of them are very low cost products like uh, 12 bucks or something like that. It really helps you with your uh, optimization of your landing pages or your, your website indirectly. So um, doing all of the things that, that we have books for there are a good idea and you should probably do it. The last thing I want to say is that um, drop by drop, wave by wave, circle within circles. Um, the ocean water, um, rain and the ocean water have actually created um, this, this beautiful cave, uh, Oceanside Cave. It was all done a wave at a time or a drop at a time or a, 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 a drip at a time. All of those things happen um, by erosion. And I, I sometimes think of SEO as erosion. And uh, there's a lot of competition out there and you're going to erode at them and beat them at their own game because you're consistent and your um, perspective is accurate and you're doing all of the right things from a white hat perspective. Uh, please do everything, um, you know, wave by wave and circle within circles and use the white hat techniques that we talk about here on a regular basis. And thank you so much. I want you to live, work and create you guys uh, are all awesome and do an awesome job. And um, I'm willing to take any questions if uh, there are any. So Boyd, did you? I don't have any questions here for you. However, I've got a question for you. And okay. so uh, you talked about the SEO. How different is SEO from a, a website to a landing page? I know you're gonna discuss that in a future one. In fact, that's in three weeks that we'll be teaching that one. Okay, um, I, I will tell you that it's it's uh, fun because you're so pointed, you're so direct that it's easy to beat all the competition. You know, if you have a full if you have a full website, you kind of have to optimize the whole website, and even then, it kind of gets muddied up in Google and all that sort of thing. If you have a single page landing page, optimizing that one landing page for depression is super simple. Um, yeah. So you, you're just targeting it so specifically. Exactly. What you're saying. Yes. And so, uh, so that'll be interesting to go through and uh, we're looking forward to that. And so thank you very much. And I hope everybody got uh, some good things out of this one today and watch for the next ones coming up. Uh, I know we have one on utilizing groups, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in Facebook and LinkedIn. Some people don't even know that there were LinkedIn groups, but there are. There's also groups in a, in a program called Alignable, and they all have some great uh, things you can do within them that will help your business either find uh, out information or to give to others, and then you become the expert. So we're going to talk about those. That class uh, is next week, Lloyd? That will be next week, yes. Okay, perfect. So forward thank it. you very much for being here. I'm Boyd Peterson and with my partner, Jim Carroll, uh, on our free Tuesday trainings. And so thank you for being here. Thank you.